here's what Peter Jackson didn't want you to see. Only shooting stars break the This video and my channel are sponsored by Whatnot. What's Whatnot? It's the website that's behind me. Whatnot is a marketplace where you can buy and sell cool collectibles by going to streams and bidding on these super fast five minute auctions where people have usually really cool collectibles. There's a lot of card games on here like Magic the Gathering and everybody's on the hunt for the one ring, including myself. I'll be doing another stream on Whatnot soon. My previous one, I actually auctioned off tokens, which I hand drew as well as some uh, very unique cards that were from a magic fest. Again, that's whatnot.com. And if you'd like to sign up, you should use the code in the description of my video because not only does it help support my channel, it also gets you some extra spending bucks when you sign up. Again, that's whatnot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I'm playing Tom Bombadil. His coat is blue, his boots are yellow, and oh, what a lovely fellow he is. This deck is five color sagas because Tom Bombadil cares about telling stories, singing songs. He is a god bard, believe it or not. Tom Bombadil is a very strong card for sagas, and it really just rewards you for having a ton of sagas out on the battlefield at any given time. So as you might imagine, I'm running a good number of sagas. Tom Bombadil wants you to have sagas with lots of lore counters on them, so he has Hexproof and Indestructible. But whenever your sagas finish, he immediately starts another one by revealing cards off the top of your deck until you find another saga and just putting it into play. That means that you have a lot of payoff as well for just Enchantress cards. And that's what I'm playing in this deck. I have what I'm going to call my typical suite of Enchantress cards, like Sithis, Sterling Grove, we've got Jukai Naturalist, we've got the Nessian Wanderer, I've got Destiny Spinner to stop things from being countered, and of course we've got some things like Sitesan Champion as well on the 2-drop and 3-drop slot. These are all really good cards, and I'll say that they're good to have in a deck like this, though it does mean you're going to be centered in green. And that's not the worst thing in the world when you're playing five colors, by the way, because ramp equals fixing equals more sagas. And we also are running an itty-bitty bit of five color good stuff because, well, I found that we were matching up against really strong commanders and in order to survive against them, sometimes your sagas just aren't enough and a little bit of Golos will do the trick, helping you get your fixing, rolling so you can play lots of extra sagas each turn is a good card to have in this deck. This deck is very centered around all those enchantments. We've got a little bit of non-saga cards in here, but for the most part, it's all about sagas. I packed in a lot of my favorite ones, ones that are just generally good, and I tried to stay away from just running the ones that just wipe the board over and over again. That's not really my jam. I'm sure that's some of your jam, though. So here's my strategy. Early in the game, we ramp, we play sagas. Then we get down Tom Bombadil. He's indestructible. How lovely. Then he finds us even more sagas, and the song continues, giving us just tons of value and a really exciting kind of ever-changing board state as the songs end and begin and begin and end. It's a really fun commander, and we're going to take it into the queue, and we're going to play so many sagas! Oh, right, before I forget, I also want to say, I am running Muldrotha in this deck. I love Muldrotha with sagas. I know that I have run this in pretty much all my other Saga decks before, like the Atraxa deck, where I could fit it. It's fun. I recommend other people try it too. Using Muldrotha and then like replaying your Binding the Old Gods will forever be one of the favorite moves for me. All right, again, let's take this into the queue and play some Sagas. Mono Red Storm with Burgi, God of Storytelling. She gets red mana for our opponent whenever they cast a spell and is very, very good with Storm because you can keep on casting to build up your mana, especially if you have something you can bounce back into your hand and recast. There's uh, something you might end up seeing in this game. But first, they got to set up their mana. Burgi works very well with... Um, blanking on the name right now. Hazaret's Monument and... Oh, a whole bunch of cards. Let's get down this overgrown tomb. Turn one, don't want to pay the two life. We can get down the naturalist the next turn. What is the name? That elemental that gets you red mana. It like gets plus one, plus one counters on it, and then you can remove the counters to get three red mana. Anyway, gets played in Burgi. Good for Stormin. Arcane Signet. Since I don't actually have that many uh, enchantments, 
Steamkin? Runaway Steamkin. Is that the full name of the card? Thank you, people in my chat, for helping me figure it out. I've had a lot of coffee today. Can you tell by the way that I'm recording this video that perhaps I didn't sleep enough and I'm compensating in an unhealthy way? Because I am. Egg! Ooh, I love this egg. When they cast instant or sorceries, this is going to start getting counters, ember counters. When it gets seven, it flips over and turns into this terrifying burn beast. Elder Dragon War not currently killing anything that's on this battlefield. Um, we could get down Calyx. He would survive an attack. But I think we'll just play the Jukai Naturalist. We don't need to use all our mana this turn. They strike it rich, getting another treasure. Getting three counters on that smoldering egg. Since they get it uh, based on the amount of mana spent on the spell. Up to four counters now. Burgie is uh, just floating that mana, having a good time. Jukai Natural is dead to a fiery impulse. We get Bob for three. They have two mana available right now. I don't think they're using any of it, though. More green, more white. Don't quite have the colors that I need. Come on, I've got enough. I'm gonna go for Calyx here. I don't have any enchantments on the battlefield. So I'm not able to use the minus ability, but I can certainly use the plus ability. Look at the top cards of my deck and fail to find an enchantment. Calyx. No wonder Clothis abandoned you. Guy's terrible at his job. Aetherflux Reservoir. Gonna turn all of those spells cast into life gain. And once they get over 50 life, they can probably one-shot kill me. Lightning Bolt hitting Calyx. They can finish him off with Burgie's attack. Still floating some mana. This is now at five counters. Forgive my failure, folks. Table the Mirror Breaker. You know, that's gonna get me some fixing. I think we go for it. Um... Unfortunately, I can't play both that and Xur because I'm missing blue mana. This is my only blue or red source right now. Can I survive? It really depends on what they have in hand. Right now, they've only played two mountains. And there's Hazaret's Monument. That's going to give them a lot of filtering and reduce the cost of their red spells. They've cast one spell per turn. Now make it two. They're gaining two. They discard, a dual strike, draw a fresh card. Chromatic Spear gets them a little bit more red, gets them three life now off Aetherflux Reservoir. They're cracking it open, drawing a card. The eggs! And they play the land! Up to 33 life now. I'm not dead yet. I am going to absolutely discard some cards. Uh, since nothing here really dies to Elder Dragon War, there and back again, even though it's really, really cool. I don't think it's what I crave right now. I can already cast the biggest, scariest card in my hands. Kami War, once I attack in with the Goblin Shaman. No, oh, what a fine goblini it is. They're blocking with the Smoldering Egg. We have a lot of really good targets. Right now, my life total is not what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of them comboing off. So I'm going to hit this Aetherflux Reservoir to start. I do have this Terra Sunder, which I can use to hit Hazardous Monument. Or if I feel like kicking, I can hit any of these. Terra Sunder, by the way, is in this deck because I think it's just a good piece of removal. Exiling things, it, like especially artifacts and enchantments early on in games, can be a huge tempo swing. Ooh, Invoke Calamity! Then I'll let them recast Fiery Impulse and Lightning Bolt. You're going straight for my face, because that's going to be a lot of burn. Ashmath Dragon flipped over. Two damage to my face. Another two damage. Burgie is currently empty-handed, so we don't have to worry about them casting anything else. Magmatic Channeler can't get anything either. But this is a lot of damage that's coming at us. Pew, pew, pew! What do I bounce? I'm bouncing Ashmouth Dragon! Because it becomes an egg once again. Also gets discarded. Not too scary now. We have a 2-2 two -two on the battlefield. This is a board wipe. This is just a fun card. I'm playing Xur. 
Zur is giving all of my enchantment creatures death touch lifelink and hexproof. Zur also gives me the ability to animate one of these, mm, the Kami War, in case I want, you know, six power and toughness worth of lifelink as a, as a defender right here. Bone Crusher Giant hitting my face for two. But I'm not dead yet. There's not any burn beyond this land. I think they're one mana short of it. I think we're going to be able to gain life before they can kill me. Ah, yes. To be at two life against a burn deck. What a wonderful time it is. By the way, this is just going to flip over anyway. Since I'm just doing it because I have the mana. We're going to get rid of Hazaret's Monument since it can disrupt our combos. Oh, wait. I did not turn full control mode on. I was going to try and copy that side. That's fine. I'll copy this side instead. Okagashi Made Manifest is not, and I'm going to reiterate this, not legendary. Which is absolutely insane. So they give us back our Jukai Naturalist. We swing for eight. Life, Link, and Death, Touch, and Trample, and Damage in the air. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? We play our Jukai Naturalist. We can play Tom Bombadil. Might not have any sagas to do anything with here, but that's just fine. I don't need those. I say, with the saga in hand. This saga is a board wipe. It's a delayed board wipe, and we might end up playing it, but I actually don't think we will. From two life to how many? Chandra able to kill Zer or Tom Bombadil, though, like, I have enough mana I can cast him again. They actually plussed Chandra to exile the top card, and they got themselves a Cold Steel Heart. They were probably hoping that they could kick off the combos this turn. And that's completely fair. Anyway, Okagachi is still made manifest. Six here, six there, and another one to the face. Each of these is going to get a buff based on what card it returns from Graveyard our opponent gets to choose. I thought they would have killed Zur since they're a burn deck. Getting rid of my life gains felt like it might be good. I guess that eventually it would have to come back off Okagashi Made Manifest, though. Whatever. We're up to 28 life. And we're going to take advantage of speed reading. We're going to read ahead on the Elder Dragon. We're going to get ourselves a 4 4 dragon. And because we finished a saga, we get an immediate next saga. I'll take those two, thank you. And I'll just hold my Terror Sunder. They gave it back to me, and I feel like it's able to hit maybe not every threat in a big red deck, but it can hit the ones that I can't just block with my two creatures. Ah, Mountain. I feel like this is them just saying, well, I guess I'll hit for two. I'll use Zura, animate my Era of Enlightenment, and then swing in with everything next turn. Probably going to be game. Everything they'd have to bring back from the graveyard will buff my Okagachi and my copy of Okagachi. And we're going to be winning the game. GG Burgie. Looks like Tom Bombadil is about to meet himself in battle. I feel like Tom Bombadil is the kind of guy that if he did meet himself, he would like just start having an amazing time. He would love to get to hang out with himself. And I get that. I would want to hang out with me too. So Tom Bombadil, oh, they have the fancy Tom Bombadil who's just a glowing man in the woods. He is a god after all. He is actually like super powerful in the stories. He just only has a certain domain. Uh, I love that. The silhouette arts for this set are great. Okay, Naturalist, we're going to be discounting our cards. Fable the Mirror Breaker, we get ourselves a goblin. Ah, uh, to sing the song of a goblin.
Weather Seed Treaty. They're getting themselves land. I actually had this in my deck and I cut it. I just didn't vibe with it. Uh, I'm actually going to be dropping some sagas here because we have Muldrotha that can bring them back. Looking excellent. Got ourselves that nice early ramp. They did go first, but we were able to accelerate our mana, uh, both with the Jukai Naturalist discounting this. We get the Goblin making tokens, and we have the Arcane Signet on turn two. Great stuff. Staff of Completion. This is going to let them put extra counters onto their sagas. And Tom Bombadil's getting exiled underneath the Leyline Binding. I don't have that much removal for Leyline Binding, and I have none of it right now, so I'm going to put him back here. We won't get the trigger from the completion of the Fable of the Mirror Breaker song, and that's just fine. We could either play Tom Bombadil again, or we could get down another Saga. Which Saga do I want, though? I'm gonna play from the Graveyard. Muldrotha, we're gonna bring back the Modern Age. With the Muldrotha on the battlefield, putting lands into graveyards is not the worst thing. It's actually kind of the best thing because it's like expanding my hand. I'll drop this forest. Swing in, get myself a lovely little treasure. And are they going to buff the Weather Seed Treaty here? No, they uh, didn't go for uh, proliferating. Instead, they drew a card. Yep. I was going to say, if you buff by domain, they would have been getting quite a bit. Elder Dragon War, two damage to each of those creatures. They're dead. They can come back. Thanks, Muldrotha. We love you, Muldrotha. She's a good elemental. She's a real cool lady when it comes to bringing things back from the graveyard. Like this. I'm going to throw all this into the graveyard. Why not? Uh, let's get a land. That forest I put there. How about a creature? The naturalist. We can use the naturalist. It's discounting all these sagas. Eeny, meeny, miny. Let's just go for the damage. Akiba Reckoner Raid. That's going to ping our opponent for one. Ping. And it looks like our opponent sees the six damage coming from Muldrotha and is going to concede. Let's go, fellow Tom Bombadils. We sung our song better, faster, and, I don't know, more melodically. Melodiously? I don't know the word for that. GG! Looks like our opponent's playing a giant deck. Not giant in size, but giant in spirit. Igar the Freezing Flame gives you card advantage when your giants deal more damage than they need to, or your instants are sorceries. Let's see, we'll get down this. Igar's very cool. Um... It's a giant wizard or spell causing the excess damage, causes card draw. Really neat. Um, I love the uh, uncommon commanders. We ramped on turn one and we want to keep on getting lands. So Restoration of Iganja will get the one other planes that's in my library. Hello, how do you do one other planes? And our friends use the Geist Blaster. Ooh, they start blasting. I got an instant or sorcery in their hand. Which instant or sorcery? We have no idea. Uh, I don't have anything I want to bring back to the graveyard. I'd rather just play this planes. We can play Glissa. Jugun defends the temple. This is ramp. Uh, this sets up for me playing other stuff. But Glissa! Glissa does all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, Satessan Champion, by the way, she does not have an on-cast trigger. She has a constellation trigger. Which means that when Nis Kamigawa uh, Saga flip over, you actually get to draw a card. It's really good stuff. Either channel or it doesn't matter what I played because it's going back into my hand. And in this case, Gliss is going back. First strike, death touch, back in hand. What a shame. Love this card. This flips over. And I get myself a 3-4. When it attacks or blocks, I get a spirit token. First headquarters gets me blue. That is another color I'm aching to get. I'm going to play the Satessan Champion. Swing in with the Kami of Bamboo Grove, since, I don't know, maybe they won't block. Wouldn't you like to do excess damage with your human wizard? I feel like Satessan Champion is not long for this world. No, Torch Breath! Lit it up. Killed my Satessan Champion before it could get any bigger. How about this? Jugan defends the temple. I might not have the red mana I need for Tom Bombadil, but I've got a lot of other stuff. 
Swing in with the Architect of Restoration, get a 1-1. One, one. This just gets me more mana. And more mana, more better. Next turn, perhaps some plus one, plus one counters. Makes it harder for them to deal excess burn damage for their commander. Ooh, Thayan Invokers! This is an arena-only card that conjures lightning bolts! What did they discard? Glimpse the Cosmos. Oh, also, I'll, I believe this has double team, so it makes extra copies of itself. Uh, these two, please. Would you like to lightning bolt? I have not been bolted yet. I'm not playing Guzza, because she's going to get bolted. I want to return this to hand so I can channel it and get some forests. Don't mind me. I'll swing with the Architect of Restoration. It is better as a blocker here, but I'm willing to trade it into some of these. Lightning Bolt. So many wee little things. So many little one ones. The Evokers appears in their hand. And they get a plus one, plus one counter. I'm gonna go for the triple, but very easy for them to disrupt it if they've got any burn in hand. I don't need that Lan Orlum speaker. Yes, it does get me my final color for Tom Bombadil, but we've got other ways to work our magic. Like just waiting patiently. The Invokers are going to get another Lightning Bolt in hand. It's good burn! I had somebody arguing with me that they don't play Lightning Bolt in red decks in their commander. Like, commander decks. And to me, that's so wild. Because why would you not want to play a Lightning Bolt? It's a Lightning Bolt! Huh. They killed the 2-2. Two -two. I guess it's bigger. But that still gives me access to Tom Bombadil, baby! Here he is! Would I like to pay X? I sure would! One, two. I feel like just... Kami Bamboo Grove still. I mean... Maybe. I'll wait. To me, it's, it's wild. There are folks out there not wanting to play Lightning Bolt. I am not blocking. I have great fear in my heart. And I'm not entirely sure of what. <gasps> oh no, I got squished! Before my inventive iteration could flip over, we don't get to hear the song finish. But we still get to have a way to stop our opponent from playing cards of certain mana values. Uh, would I like to play the X? Uh, yes, I'm going to pay... One. Just one. Oop. Getting big is good. They cannot cast things that cost five. I'm all swinging for two in the air. I don't think there's that many 5-drops in an Agar deck, but we'll be ready. They have a giant, so they get this extra value off Glimpse the Cosmos. There's this uh, cool secondary ability. This was part of the Call Time Giants theme. They cast it from their graveyard, and it will be exiled. It's like a anticipate kind of card. Remnant of the Rising Star takes the three damage. This is a lightning strike. But since it's three damage to two toughness, they get to draw a card. And a Moen Trickster Fiend can be unblockable if it's attacking it alone. And can also exile spells from graveyards. I feel like it's doing a lot here. Lissa. First Rowan Games. Not to be confused with the second or third or fourth. Gold Steel Heart. Naming red. 
And do I want to also play Kami of Mary Groves just to stop them from paying one drop? Sure do! I was hoping to hold on to that to channel it to make some extra forest so I'd have some discard fodder, but this is fine too. The first of Rowan Games begins. This is a four chapter saga that first makes a little guy, then buffs a guy, then draws your cards, and then gives you the gold when you win the medal. Our good friend Thomas Bombas just hanging out here. They specialized a Moen, making her into blue. You can specialize by discarding a card of the color. And you can see here, you get to exile instant your sorceries when she deals the combat damage and then tap things down and lock them down. Their other choice would have been in red, which I don't even remember what the red one does and I can't see it now. Probably does extra damage. That's just my guess. Who's getting tapped down and locked down? Is it the living breakthrough? Since flying damage seems difficult for them to prevent. Ah, they're tapping down Glissa because she's really, 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 really good at attacking. And blocking. And doing anything. She's got first target death though. She's so good. I'm going to put my big old buff on the living breakthrough. We got extra mana, so I'm going to use that extra mana. Animate a planes. And swing on in. Reign of Revelation. A bit of prowess. If they double block, then they will be doing excess damage. They weren't up for it. Mm, I'll hold this in hand. I'll pretend I have spell. I do not have useful spell. Ah, uh, it's Craig. Drawing a second card gets them a bit of extra burn. And look, since they did an extra bit of burn, they get to do more burn. Drawing the card causes more burn. Agar says, ooh, more cards. Excellent. Three unblockable damage straight to my face. I'm down to 10. They're down to seven. We have a seven, seven in the air. And they lock down living breakthrough, so I can't attack with it. <gasps> oh, but the cards, the cards. Let's start with Sterling Grove. Just make it a little harder for them to uh, touch my enchantments. I will exile Iron Craig Pyromancer. We now have more than four lore counters on things. And we'll try to bully a block out of our opponent. Leaving myself with a blocker, even though Amoan is unblockable if she attacks alone. They're down to two. I've got ten life remaining. Lear, Disciple of the Drowned! Anything they haven't exiled yet is now fair game to be recast. And remember how they have those extra lightning bolts? Well, they have three mana, and I think they have two bolts and a strike. That's six damage that I can see right there. Um, am I dead? The answer is... Maybe? One? It brings me down to four. It brings me down to one. <gasps> but we live at one life. We get the triggers. We get the swing in. And it's going to be a good game for Tom Bombadil and his many sung songs. We're up against Raga Draga Gorgut's boss. This guy makes mana dorks so dang strong by giving them plus two, plus two, and untapping them whenever they attack in. Ragadraga is one of my favorite gruel commanders because it rewards you for ramping. And not just by making your ramping creatures stronger, but also by making you get plus seven, plus seven, trample, and untapping a creature when you cast something that costs seven mana. It adds up very quickly to be a huge amount of power. 
I also like this hand, not just because it has many colors of mana, it has a bit of ramp, it has a board wipe, it also has Goldberry! You know, Tom Bombadil's wife. Might end up just playing her right here. Now, I'm going to start with the Llanowar Loam Speaker. Goldberry is interesting in this deck because you can use her to remove counters from your sagas. So you can start them over again, or so you can accelerate them and draw some cards. Uh, do I want to just keep ramping? I sure do. We want to make sure we get some red mana since our battles here could use it. Battle Frost and Fire, not actually a battle. Something to note. Um, what colors to get? Let's go with blue. No, red and black. I'll put the red into play. And I'll play this so I can get down Okiba Reckoner Raid. This is a one cost saga. There's a couple of those, including Long List of the Ents, which I'm actually not running in this deck just as a personal choice, even though I do think the number of lore counters it has is great with Tom Pompadour. We now have all of our colors. We have. A saga about to flip next turn. Here comes Tom Bombadil. He does not have indestructible and hexproof since we only have two lore, co lore uh, counters on our saga here, but he's still a 4-4 on the battlefield, hanging out, singing his songs. I, I guess this this implies that he's singing about rats? I think he's singing about rats. Oh my god, that's a lot of elves. Uh, if Ragadraga comes down next turn, and I suspect that he will, these are all going to get plus two, plus two, and yikes, they have a lot of mana with Nissa out here. I do have, um, I do have an option, what I'm going to call a little emergency exit button here. I think I'm going to use it. I'm, I'm so sorry about this, sir. Um, listen, I, I know I love and respect you too, but... We're going to be wiping the board again next turn anyway. I may as well try and get Nissa off this battlefield. Tom Bombadil, please kill this Planeswalker for me. They now have two lands, no mana dorks, and I think that's going to cement us pretty well as the victors in this game. Uh, this is going to die. I just recognized, like, oh, wait a minute. You're not an artifact, but it doesn't really matter. We've upset our opponent's resources so badly that this game is in our pockets. Did I have fun? Sure. I'd say no way, but it's more like no nay! Our opponent is playing Shadowfax, Lord of Horses, and is going to be showing us the meaning of haste. Gotta go fast, using your horse to cheat out creatures from your hand. It's like a super duper sneak attack with Shadowfax, able to put a creature with lesser power than whatever attacking horse you have onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. I feel like Shadowfax is absolutely on my list of commanders to build, and I look forward to seeing what our opponent cheats out into play. Low power, high value, really cool cards. Also, for anybody out here who's trying to build on a budget, Shadowfax is an uncommon. But you're probably going to want to have some really strong cards to cheat into play that are probably mythics and rares. Oh, gosh, that's a cool looking horse. You know, I just realized, unlike the paper version of this card, this does not show the reminder text of haste on the card itself, only off to the side. Hey, Delighted Halfling. Hmm. I guess we can start getting out some sagas. Which sagas do I want to start with, though? I think we'll get the Era of Enlightenment. Hmm. Teachings of the Kirin. It's better for me to stagger these a little bit, um, just for Tom Bombadil, but since Tom's probably not coming out next turn, we'll see. If I if I can scry to some good, good mana, uh, some red mana, sort of, not enough. I've got six mana here. Is it time for the horse? Is our opponent out here yelling, giddy up? Hello, horse. They attack. And what gets cheated into play? It's... Sarah Paragon, able to replay things from their graveyard. Also, just a flying three damage right there. I can't stop that. I don't have double black, so I can't play Phyrexian Scriptures. Not at this exact moment. And I can't get out Tom Bombadil either. I feel like playing Pull of the Mist Moon or Dryad is... E they're, they're both pretty good plays here. I'm going to use Pull of the Mist Moon. 
I'm going to hit Sarah Paragon over Shadow Fax. If this is the scariest thing they had to cheat into play, I'm not that scared right now. Ooh. I did see them just hold priority there, and it does make me wonder if they have something on that treasure which they can use. These will both be flipping over next turn. Tom Bombadil won't be able to see the song end, though. Grelv, that's a good protective one-drop spell. Shadow Fax, is it time to swing in and do horse stuff? What horse stuff do you do? Aw, Dawnbringer Cleric. So they have removal for the Pull of the Mist Moon. Nice. They could destroy any of these enchantments as well, but I think they did choose right. Uh, something kind of cute. Phyrexian Scriptures would not kill Screlv. And Screlv's an artifact. What a cute little guy. That gives me a little bit more black mana. If I play Calyx, I might be able to bully them into... Um, leaving back blockers. We'll see. We now have the mana we need for Phyrexian Scriptures. All right, Calyx, that is what they had as a one-drop spell. Calyx is gone. Swords to Plowshares, no longer on the battlefield. Very, very fair. To get rid of my uh, creature that's able to clone any of my other artifacts currently, or uh, my enchantments currently. I'm being asked, uh, how do I feel about Delighted Halfling? In this deck where we've got five colors but very few legends, I think that Delighted Halfling is still a good inclusion. It's one mana ramp in our predominant color, which is green. It also helps us play our most multicolored card, which is Tom Bombadil. Um, I'd say like that's a great advantage there. The can't be countered on Delighted Halfling hasn't been super relevant yet. But that's a big yet. That's like, yeah, I haven't been able to do anything about that yet, but that's also because this has not come down early in a game where I've been playing against multicolored stuff. All right, so we can see we've got Shadow Facts with protection from green there. Uh, Intrepid Adversary, who can be brought back from the graveyard. Go ahead and double block there. Or do I want to exile? Okay, I don't need this mana. I'm going to double block with you two. Trying to tread the line of not dying and also winning. Rexian Scriptures, you are now an artifact! And hopefully I don't die next turn. We're going to swing in here. We're going to exile a creature card. The Intrepid Adversary, so it can't be replayed. Ba-bam. I got myself a little chump blocker. A colorless one so they can't give protection from it. Or I, I keep saying protection. Skrulv is not a mother of runes. But he's a little something like it. Frexian Scriptures getting ready to wipe the board of everything but the might. The might, might. Certainly some cards that Shadowfast could cheat into play that would win the game here. Let's see what they've got. Shadow Fax brings in the Ambitious Farmhand. Not too scary, but it will get them a land in hand. And not right now, but... If, no, it could be transformed into a 3-3 three, three right now. I was about to say, do they have Coven? They do. They have 1, 3, and 4 as powers among their creatures. R.I.P. though, Ambitious Farmhand. Not long for this world unless they... Get rid of the scriptures! They chaos warped it, giving me a Weaver of Harmony. So that's been uh, just tossed into my library somewhere. Ooh, I wonder where it is. I wonder where it's gone. I wonder what we can do now. I can get rid of a one total creature. 
which unfortunately would probably just come back with Sarah Paragon. The Dryad of Elysian Grove. And I don't think I can shock in. Hmm, I just realized if I attack in there, tap, we could get extra chump blockers by exiling... Only creatures get us more blockers. And there's only one creature in the graveyard. Nice! Using Cathar Transforms, they play Mind Stone, crack it open, draw a card. I can even play it again. Sarah Paragon likes this. Hello, you beautiful horse. Getting, I assume, protection from green, since that's what most of this is. And who comes into play? It's Luminous Brood Moth! That is so much damage that I just can't block. That's going to be the game. GG. Four on the ground, six in the air. Good job, Shadowfax. I had fun. Stop asking me, though. Oh, gee, it's Jesoth, Sun's Avatar, a big old dinosaur. I have some ramp here, but I don't really have the colors that I need. That said, I'm still going to keep this hand and see what I can get. Having a turn one enchantment, which gets me a second land into play, is just good enough for me to hold on to, even if I don't have a double white, I don't have any blue, and I don't have any black. I believe in the heart of the cards. Jisoth, by the way, is a dinosaur that gets you more dinosaurs. It's got Vigilance, Trample, and Haste, and you're certainly going to want to ramp up to get all of your dinosaurs into play, either by hitting with Jisoth or by, well, playing them. If you have the mana to cast this, this eight mana dinosaur, you probably have the mana to cast the other big scary dinosaurs too. Last wood surge, that's that ramp. We're talking about getting two lands, throwing them into play. Now we've got extra red. We go there and back again. We could get down Glissa. I think we go there and back again. The Hobbit! The song of the Hobbit. Um, here, you can't block. Excellent. My combi of bamboo groves is now a ring bearer. There and back again tells the tale of a little hobbit who could. A little Bilbo Baggins who stole Smog's treasure. Are, are you going to destroy my there and back again? Oh no, they did! Kogel and Yadaro just turning this into trash. They even get to draw a card. What a shame. Um, Bombadil would have loved to hear the ending of that song, but it's too little too late. Uh, getting out Tom here doesn't seem amazing. Pull of the Mist Moon lets me upset their ramp, but I think they'll be able to play Jisoth anyway. So I'm going to play Glissa. Uh, the reason for Glissa here is that, well, first of all, Glissa's nasty because she's got First Strike and Death Touch. But on top of that, we also now just have like, okay, a way to rewind our sagas, keep the pressure moving, and also a way to stop Jisoth from hitting my face. Because first strike, death touch. I'm being told that there's a six-year-old that likes my dog. Well, this dog pet is possibly the best pet in Arena, and it's a shame that it's not widely available, because everybody should be able to pet the doggy. Yes, they should. Again, destroying my saga using Beside You Who Endures. That's going to let me grab something that has a basic land type. Uh, I'm going to grab, um, which of these do I want? I'm like checking my fixing. I go Zagoth Triome. That feel with no sagas. Oh darn. No sense in kicking it since I don't have anything else in hand. I'm just going to get rid of Gwenna here. I'm not attacking with Glissa because just off. You know, just off. And attacking with a bamboo or a commie of bamboo groves is fine. 
Oh, nice. Galta and Maverin. But, you know, hit for a hit. They might have a 12-12 with Trample that makes extra dinosaurs, but I've got an 8-8. Eight, eight. A Kraken with Hexproof. It'll also be tapping down all of their non-land permanents next turn, keeping them tapped, and then letting me steal one of their cards, which I'm um, just going to go ahead and say, probably going to be Galton Maverin. Taking their commander is good, but taking the Galton Maverin does a lot for me. Gives me another 8-8 eight, eight when I attack in, assuming this is still alive. That's going to be game. GG Dinosaurs. Zimone and Dina talking about that Sultai good stuff. This is a very keepable hand. We've got good colors of mana. We've got fixing, ramp, uh, more fixing, more ramp. No sagas, though. And that's okay. We'll get there when we get there. Goblet Shrine bringing that in tapped so we don't have to pay two life. Next turn, Blooming Marsh. Probably going to go for either the Nissian Wonder or the Sanctum Weaver. There's nothing I'd really want to get out a turn early with Sanctum Weaver, but we could double spell next turn um, if we do. And I guess I'll do that. Sanctum Weaver lets me a uh, Chromatic Lantern and Nissian Wanderer. Assuming this is still alive. It is not. It has been infernally grasped. By the way, Zimone and Dina, if you're not familiar with the commander, rewards you for drawing two cards in a turn by draining your opponent for two life, healing you for two, and also gives you a way to draw that second card per turn with a tap ability that sacrifices a creature and you're destroying my blooming marsh. Well, I'm talking about your commander. Uh, sure, I have basics in my deck. Uh, I already have another green source, so I'm actually looking here to see if there's another color I would want. We do have a chromatic lantern available in hand. I'm gonna just grab a mountain. Sure. I've got some good, good green stuff. Anyway, they can sacrifice cards and it gets them more cards. Yeah. Chromatic Lantern. And a Brainstorm in response, setting up the cards on top of their deck. They have enough mana for Zimone and Dina. We can just play that next turn. They've got the perfect fixing. It's, by the way, possible that they use the Demolition Field not just to punish my deck for being five colors, saying like, oh, well, they might not be able to play stuff next turn. It's possible that they did that to get their own three colors of mana. I've definitely done that before with Field of Ruin, Demolition Field, and similar. Midnight Clock's going to start ticking up, and when it hits midnight, they shuffle their graveyard into the library and draw seven. Opponent, show me your secrets. The Cruelty of Gix is going to kick off this, and oh, that's a good secret to have. They have a Shouldered Whispering one, the one that makes us sacrifice and, you know, then reanimate. Well, if I have it, then they'll have to sacrifice and I'll get to reanimate. Sanctum Weaver, please return to me. Chapter two, we get to tutor for a card. What do I want? I really like Kami War or Muldrotha. Lots of good choices here. And I could just play our good friend Tom Bombadil to get a reward from this triggering on Chapter 3. Uh, I'm going to go for, instead though, Mirari's Wake to double up my land-based mana and then throw down Destiny Spinner. In case of counter spells, break glass. Destiny Spinner is great against any deck that's running blue because creatures and enchantment spells I control can't be countered. All-star uncommon right here. It's also like a two mana two three. A two mana two three that has this additional animating lands ability. All-star uncommon. Wish they would reprint it because right now the price of it, I want to say it's like five bucks if you want to buy a paper copy. And it's so good to have. Just so good to have. Realm Breaker looks like they want to they want to be uh milling me and stealing lands out of my graveyard. Well, I want to be stealing things out of their graveyard too. Give me that children, please. Oh, yep. Nope, that's fair. Sometimes good sagas win games. GG Zimone and Dina. Nissa of Shadowed Bows. 
This Nissa is about reanimating or cheating things into play from your hand. She can actually do both using her minus ability. She also animates lands and has a landfall trigger, so you can get her to have higher loyalty just by ramping. As long as you get lands into play, they trigger her landfall and she gets extra loyalty. It's a very cool design. Hmm, Temple Lil Plentil. Want to see if I can find some more colors of mana? Dryad does count, but it's not what I'm looking for right now. I'd rather have something I could either play on turn two or play on turn four after we get down the file of Galadriel. Nice. Carrion Beast Caller gets plus one, plus one counters. I would love to play Satessan Champion, but without having an enchantment to follow up with, I don't like her being on the battlefield and being exposed to removal, especially against the Golgari deck, which is probably pretty good at killing things. Oop. Beast Collar bops us. We take a little damage. We're going to use Binding the Old Gods. This is both removal and ramp. Uh, I could hit their Celestus. I could hit their Beast Collar. I'm going to go for Celestus over Beast Collar. Key to the Archive. More ramp. They also get a card from the Spellbook, and they can keep it in hand so long as they discard something else. Hello, Beast Caller. You're not so scary when you're just a 2-2. Two -two. You get pretty big, though. Pretty big, pretty fast. They kept whatever they got from the key, and they discarded Go for the Throat. I'm actually surprised they didn't discard a creature, knowing that they could get it out with Nissa's ability. All right, Binding Old Gods lets me get a forest, a forest of any type. I'd like one that has red and black. So we're going to grab Zeotora's Proving Ground. Yeah, that sounds good. I could have used Terra Sunder to take out Key to the Archive, but I'd rather set up the Satessan Champion and get out Delighted Halfling. Delighted Halfling. It's just a really good card. Um, it's one mana ramp. Sometimes it's colorless, but if you're using it for something like Tom um, Bombadil, my commander, then not only is it colored mana, it also stops counter spells. Kind of delicious. You spell They've animated a land, using that to cast Gwenna, Eyes of Gaia. And this now has its first plus one, plus one counter. I'm not blocking. Not blocking that. Aha, but my creatures have death touch. We can also make them huge and scary and really, really cool. I'm going to use Marari's Wake. This now taps for two mana. I'm going to swing both the Satessan Champion and the Delighted Halfling at Nyssa. If they want to block with Gwenna, this has Death Touch until end of turn from Binding the Old Gods, and she would be dead. Still a lot of mana here. This taps for two, but can't be used for Planeswalkers. This taps for two, can be used for Planeswalkers. They cultivate! Get a land into play and a land in hand. That would have been really great with Nyssa in place, since she would have gotten those landfall triggers. Yeah, they're, they're saying, ooh, that Mirari's Wake cannot stand. We saw what they got off Key to the Archive. That was a really smart pick. Knowing that they were up against an enchantment's deck, they took Cross and Grip so they could just destroy an enchantment. Smart move. They've got three mana, but only for creatures. Tyrion Beast Scholar, bigger than my Destiny Spinner, but they might want to hold it back as a blocker. Nope, they're just going in for three. I'm at 15 life. They have 10 more life than me. Oh, if only we had a saga. Oh, wait. We do! The Elder Dragon War. I'm going to start with Tom Bombadil, though, and I did want you to be tapped for mana there. That's fine. I didn't have a counter spell. I couldn't use it anyway because Destiny Spinner and also they're in green black. Green or black? Black! Swinging with the Satessan Champion. 
Do I want to tear it asunder that key to the archive, or do I want to use Zagoth Triome? I'm just gonna get rid of key to the archive. That's two mana gone off the battlefield. The way Tom Bombadil works, we can actually just skip ahead to chapter three, and he will immediately trigger. I'm probably gonna go for chapter two though. Um just out of, like, personal desire in order to, you know, discard these lands from hand. Tribute to the World Tree, get some card draw on creatures entering the battlefield, or just creature buffins, depending on how big the creature happens to be. Hero's Downfall, Tom Bombadil is dead. That's fine. We have mana, we can play him again. Do you attack? They do not. I, I mean, a double block is pretty good for me there. Just playing Tom Bombadil again, or do we go for the Saga? I'm gonna go for the Saga. I want the Satessan Champion to trigger. Oh, ideally, I should be um, doing something kind of fun here. So, Satessan Champion... On top of this, I have Files of Galadriel out. Now, I don't need that Calyx. I want to draw an extra card. So we do! If you draw a card when your hand is empty, it doesn't matter how many, as long as you're drawing cards, a file of Gladriel will get you one extra. So do you one better. Uh, do I want to see what's going on? Sure do. Here comes Golos. Five color, good stuff. Let's me roll for seven mana to get the top three cards of my deck and cast them for free. Also, lets me fetch the world tree. So my fixing is automatic. Thank you, Fixins. Nissa returns into play. I am one true Pluses. Untapping the swamp. They're animating it. I wonder if they want to attack in with it. Or if there's another reason they animated it. Nope. By the way, with this untap ability, you do not need to turn things into a creature. You can just untap the land. So it's not as vulnerable to removal. We get a dragon, our saga goes away, and we roll them bones! Golos, what do we get? Sanctum Weaver, Kami of Bamboo Groves, and an Indatha Trium. Not the spiciest roll, all pretty, like, cheap, low-power stuff, but still better value than just playing the stuff from my hand. Ah, sweet, delicious ramp. You currently tap for one, two, three mana. Infernal Grass picks out my dragon. If they'd like to, they could use that minus ability, but they have no creatures. This person, by the way, I've seen a ton of good Golgari removal. But I feel like you need creatures. Where's your big stuff? Where's your big stuff for your Nyssa? I'm guessing it's just hiding somewhere in the deck. Okay, I said this. Hello, yes. Get down, Sithus. We're gonna start spitting out these cards. Some of this. Some of that. Oh, to be mid-range. Startling Grove makes this tap for even more mana. And Elspeth Conquers Death could take out one of their blockers or their Nyssa. I'll hit Gwenna over the Nyssa. Since we still have one mana left over from the Sanctum Weaver, I'll also play Chromatic Lantern. And I'll use the Destiny Spinner and Golos to attack Nyssa. Power 
third kill. Another kill spell. Where are your creatures? Where are your creatures? Well, apparently they never found them. Because that's game. We have a very good board. We're only getting more value. And we have a fairly full handful of cards here. We got we got Cure Best the Sea Gods! We can even make them discard, reanimate. It's going to be hard for them to come back here. And I'm going to say GG Nissa. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. This deck was one that people asked for me to build right when the set came out, so build it I did. If there's a deck you'd like to see me build using the cards from the new Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-earth, you should let me know in the comments. I am looking forward to building a whole bunch of decks, but I do want to give a warning that I am going to be out of town for a few days. Not the few days I was just out of town for, but another few more days. I'll try to record a bunch of videos ahead of time so you have some fun stuff to watch, including some new Brawl Stars. But I need to know what commander you want to see so I can build it before I go on my trip. Thank you again so much for watching, and have a brawlful day.